Hi, this is Turbo, and welcome to part one in we'll, what will probably be a four-part series um, on how to overclock and bend parts in PC Building Simulator. Um, so you might be asking, why? what is binning? What do you mean when we say bend parts? Well, there's something in the real world called the Silicon Lottery. Um, and basically what happens during um, CPU chip or GPU chip and uh, even memory chip manufacturing process is that um, you have little differences between the chips, whether that's due to maybe a slight impurity somewhere in the silicon or a difference between two different manufacturing machines on the manufacturing floor. Um, whatever it is, um, not everything turns out the exact same. So the devs, um, in their infinite wisdom, added this into the game. So not every 1080 Ti that's water-cooled is the exact same. Um, they basically added in a random number generator that will randomly generate different asset values for the card. So one card uh, may max out at like 65 degrees while another card maxes out at 95 degrees. Um, so that's why we go through and we do this. Um, so we find those best cards and we can use those for our overclocking efforts and that way we can reach these you know ungodly high temperature or not temperatures scores in 3d mark um, like the 25,000s and, and, and beyond hopefully when RTX hits um, so to start we need to grab a case um, we need to basically build a benchmark rig that pretty much anything will fit in. Uh, there's a few different cases that are good for this. Uh, the Cosmos C700P is one. Um, the EVGA DG series is another one. Personally, um, for any kind of benchmark work that I do, um, I like to use the Define R6. Uh, it's got a few different things um, going for it that just makes it a little bit easier to work with as far as um, some cooling parts go and so that's just why I always go with this. Um, so I'll turn, tear this case down, get everything out of it. I like to get this out of the way so I can move the panel over because I'm picky. Um, and now that everything's out, we can put in some different case fans. Uh, QFs have the best airflow in the game right now so they give the best cooling characteristics. Um, and since we're doing CPU, we're actually going to put fans all the way around. I actually, in my testing, found that doing it this way with the HE01 CPU cooler is actually better than running um, a 150mm AIO water cooler. Uh, so let's get all these hooked up. And yes, I keep auto cable off because when you're installing this many fans it tends to cause issues with uh, the wiring and everything so one fan will just suddenly not be connected so you have to go in and undo all the cables anyway and then redo them yourself so I just leave it off um, okay so uh, for power supplies we're not pushing everything really hard. This isn't a build where you're going to need massive amounts of power where you overclock everything. Um, we're just overclocking one component at a time and all the other components are going to be you know, really low power stuff that doesn't put out a lot of heat and everything. Um, still, you want to make sure that you have enough power that you're not going to blue screen in the middle of uh, your testing. So it's usually good to go with a bigger one anyway. Um, I usually go with the 1200 EVGA just because that's what I have at my computer at home. Uh, so for motherboards, um, since we're starting with CPU, we're going to be looking at exclusively the 7980X right now. Uh, that processor is the best in the game right now. I know the 2990WX has more cores, but right now the way that the asset files for that CPU work, it's actually worse than the 7988. XE. I don't know if they'll change that since the 2990 is a workstation or server core of uh, CPU. So we may never actually see its 3D Mark numbers get any better since it's not actually made for 3D Mark type stuff. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at all the X299 boards. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, I like the ROG boards. Um, 
but any X299 board will pretty much work. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I did quite a bit of board bending as well, just to see if there was any difference between them. Um, and there really isn't. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. I like the Rampage Extreme, just because it's pretty. If you're going to be, you know, taking pictures and doing videos and putting them on the internet, it may as well look cool, right? Uh, so let's get some storage in there. MPs, just because, you know, fast install times are awesome. So we'll grab our 7980XE. And for RAM, um, since RAM doesn't really matter for this test, um, it doesn't really matter what you grab. You just need to have something in there that'll let the computer start. So let's get our thermal paste on there and our HCO1 installed. And for the graphics card, um, again, you just want something low power that's not going to put a lot of heat into the case, so I usually just go with the 1030. Um, okay, so let's get all our cables installed. All right, and let's boot her up. Don't forget your USB drive, so you have an OS. And we'll load into the OS, and we'll install OCCT, and that's it. Since all we're testing is CPUs, we don't need GPU tuner or anything else. Alright, and once she gets to this point, uh, F2 or delete to get into the BIOS. Um, again, leave RAM alone. We're not going to be doing anything to it. Just go straight to the CPU page. Um, add one click to the ratio, uh, just to get a little bit of an overclock. We don't want you know we're not pushing this thing super hard we just just want to have a baseline at a specific set value that we can compare to all the other chips um, so I usually go with the, the 43 and the 1.75 I like to bump the voltage up to 1.75 because some of the worst 7980 XEs have issues with uh, blue screening at less voltage than that so We'll just do that, apply changes and restart. Get into everything and usually you can do this one in two ways. You can wait a few seconds or you can just go ahead and immediately open OCCT. Um, the reason you do that, um, do the wait time, is that when how this game does its um, you know power sensor with everything it does it as a gradual rise in power so when you first boot up the computer it starts at some arbitrary number minimum um, I'm not really sure what it is I think the lowest I've ever seen is 89 watts or so um, but then it takes a little bit of time for it to rise up to its true minimum idle so you're waiting a few seconds before you open OCCT make sure that this your value in your minimum idle box is actually um, the correct value for your power. Um, okay, so uh, we'll go infinite and we'll hit on. Um, the reason we want infinite is because we want to give the program enough time to bring this max power draw up to its absolute maximum. So we just wait for that to happen. Usually it's about 30 seconds or so. Um, some of the worst ones are a little bit more than 30 seconds. Some of the better ones are as little as 25 seconds. Okay, so we've maxed out um, at 327. Now we can just turn this off. And what I like to do is I like to sit and wait for this power draw to come back down to its minimum levels. Um, and what that does is it allows, because this number fluctuates so much, it allows this absolute minimum uh, temperature value for the CPU to stabilize. And we're almost there. Okay, so we've hit our minimum for power draw, we're back down to everything, and now we have our numbers. We have our min temp for CPU, we have our max load temp for CPU, we have our minimum power draw at idle, and we have our maximum power draw at load. So now what do we do with these numbers? Well, um, you can use a program like um, Excel or the Google Docs Excel type thing or anything like that really, anything that allows you to make a spreadsheet out of something. Um, and then you just make a table and you go to work. So 
you have your uh, minimum idle temps, your max load temps, your idle power draw, and your max power draw, and you just record those. And then you shut everything down, pull that CPU you just tested out, put a new one in, and you just do it again and again and again. Um, here I did 100. I wanted to be really, really thorough. Uh, you could probably get away with doing half of that and still find the the right numbers that you want to look for. Um, the best that I could find is here in the um, highlighted in yellow. But it looks like the that best chip values are probably about one in um, well, prob probably about one in fifty or one in forty. Maybe a little bit better than that. I haven't actually crunched the numbers, but um, you know, this is the, just my quick observation from what I found. So once you have all that um, you're done with CPUs um, so like I said all you have to do is when you get done you just shut down pull this off pull the CPU out put a different one in still a 7980XE and then put your cooler back on hook that back up restart head over here go straight into the BIOS and since you replace the chip everything here is going to reset so you dial your numbers back in apply and restart and then you run OCCT again and you record the numbers just like that and you just do that over and over again until you have as many numbers as you want um, so once you're done with CPUs um, it's time to do GPUs um, so let's head over here uh, I may have used all of my fractal design cases, so what I'll do is I'll just head down here. Okay, so this is my um, fractal design case for doing GPUs. Um, again, um, on a lot of the stuff that really didn't matter, um, I used just regular old components. I grabbed the Maximus 10 formula because it was the very first board on the list. I put an 8100 CPU in there to keep temps down. Um, same storage, same RAM. Um, the biggest difference, of course, is going to be the water cooling stuff. So I took the fans out of the front, put a 360 millimeter radiator in, um, and then ran my loop. So one note here is that when you're running this loop, you need to do this tube first. Um, a lot of times, if you try to leave that tube last, um, it will cause clipping issue with these other two. Um, and it basically it goes from that back port on the radiator to the pump inlet. Um, okay, and since we have that, we can start up, and what I do is I'll install OCCT and GPU tuner since we need the GPU tuner to dial in our overclocks. Um, you won't ever go into the BIOS for this because you're just going to leave the CPU and the RAM the same. Um, so first thing you do, open up GPU tuner, dial in your core clock and your memory clock. Uh, best values I found for testing purposes were 2100 on the core clock and 2400 on the memory clock and of course max out core voltage. Um, once you're done with that you can open up OCCT. Um, you might wait just a little bit longer if you want to make sure that this value is stabilized um, since it's got to come up so much higher. Um, but once you do that you're ready to load in, you hit infinite and you go for it. Um, it these tests take just a little bit longer because um, of course there's uh, more power draw there so you gotta wait for it to come all the way back up to max um, but then again when you hit that max uh, turn it off let it come all the way back down and let that uh, minimum GPU temp stabilize um, once that's done and you have your values again um, you just make something uh, you know just exactly the same as before um, I guess I showed you the 1080 Ti one for the CPUs, so I'll show you the CPU one for the GPUs. How's that work? Um, so yeah, there again. Just uh, make your database, go for it, and just do it over and over again. Um, so we can see here we maxed out at 554 watts, so we can turn that off and let it come back down. Once that's done, um, you know, record your values, um, and then you shut her down, empty the loop remove this pipe and this pipe take these two out pull the graphics card out 
grab another 1080 Ti, do your cables, um, and at this point you might actually, um, if you're like me and you don't like that auto cable tool, you might actually want to put it on now at this point since all you're removing and replacing is the GPU, it'll just save you a few seconds here and there, um, and then fill her back up. And I really, really hope that they make a quick loop fill tool so this doesn't take so long. Granted, this is a really short loop, so it's not that bad, but still. Um, and then you start back up, load back in, go back into GPU tuner, dial in 2100 and 2400 again, and you're good to go. So that is pretty much all that there is to it, to making a binning database. Um, you don't really need to make a binning database for RAM. Um, and the reason for that is, is RAM is really easy. You plug it into the motherboard, you dial it up to 1.9 volts on the uh, RAM voltage in the BIOS, and then you restart. And if it bricks, okay, that's not a good RAM stick. If it doesn't, okay, you've got one of the best RAM sticks in the game. Um, the RAM to do that with, I'll, I'll cover all that in a, a RAM only video because there's the, the actual overclocking of that is really complicated. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. If you enjoy the video, please like it, maybe even subscribe. Um, that way you get notifications for the next videos in this series.